And so as leaders, the more that we can be self-aware and not judge ourselves for the days where things didn't go as well as we would have liked, I think that is one of the most essential skills that will serve you far better than any formal uh, skill development or leadership development program. So it's about self-awareness, self-reflection, and not judging yourself along the way, and just seeing how you can continue to improve with your interactions and with your leadership style and skills through that reflection and your own feedback of yourself. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the People Hum interview series. This is your host, Zia, at People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view, integrated human capital management automation platform, the winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for Human Capital Management that's specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and channel that receives more than 400,000 visitors a year, and we also publish several, several interviews with well-known names globally every month. We have with us today Shona Elliott, an Amazon best-selling author with her first book on transformational leadership for senior leaders called Creating Value as a Senior Leader, Effective Strategies to Retain Employees, Increase Engagement, and Achieve Your Organization's Goals. Shona specializes in helping senior leaders emerging, emerging from crises, connecting and engaging with their greatest asset, that is, their employees, for the purposes of increasing employee retention, employee engagement, and achieving an organization's strategic goals. We're th- very thrilled to get into conversation with you today, Shona. Welcome to People Home. Thank you so much for having me, Z. I appreciate it. So the first question that I had for you was, can you tell us about the contents of your book, Creating Value as a Senior Leader, and how it came into being? Yeah, happy to. Uh, I've got 15 plus years of senior leadership experience, including being a CEO of a technology shared service organization. And throughout my career, I really recognize the importance for me personally as a leader to connect with frontline workers. And I did that consistently throughout my career. And every time I dedicated a day, a month, or a day, a quarter to kind of walk in the shoes of my employees by working a shift as a a housekeeper or answering IT tickets at the help desk, uh, watching C-sections, whatever it might be. I walked away from those experiences really humbled and really grateful for the experience and grateful for the incredible work our teams were doing. Gave me real insight as to some of the challenges our employees were facing And as senior leaders, we make decisions based off of reports our leaders provide us. And sometimes those aren't really reflective of the current working conditions our employees are facing or reflective of what's important to them. And so what I'd like to do is always kind of like fact check what our culture is and get a gauge and a pulse as to how our employees are feeling. And being able to walk in their shoes gave me kind of that tangible feel and interaction with employees. And that always made me inspired to continue to do what I'm doing and to focus on what I always consider to be the greatest asset of organizations, the people. So I had the opportunity to kind of step down from my CEO role when I had uh, my daughter, Savannah, and that was a few years ago. And when she started preschool, an opportunity to write a book came up and I hadn't intended to write about leadership. I had a few other ideas in mind. And as I began to write and submit a proposal, I couldn't help but focus on leadership. I'm so passionate about trying to create the understanding for senior leaders that it isn't additional work to walk in employee's shoes. It's not additional work to find your own way to connect with frontline employees. It is the work. And that message for me is what I have believed my whole career. It's what I know to be successful. And it's helped me help organizations that were toxic, and dysfunctional uh, in their cultures and based on connection of employees, turn those organizations around to be top 100 employers. And so as that book came together, I was able to do deeper research. Uh, Although I've got three years of doctorate studies in organizational development, uh, I was looking at it now, that research in a new lens and all of the information and data available to us on the you know on the research specifically to senior leaders and leaders in general connecting with employees for the purposes of building trust employee engagement the impact that has on the bottom line of an organization as to the success as to the quality of products produced 
as to the perceived satisfaction by customers, it's all correlated. We kind of know that as leaders, but to see the overwhelming evidence in doing research for the book just helps solidify what I already knew to be true. And so that is the intention of the book is to really try to paint that picture easily for senior leaders. So they're not trying to figure out, oh my goodness, like how do I fit this into my day? How do I connect with employees? I'm so busy. It actually is your work, but more importantly, it makes your role as a leader so much more efficient. You can connect with them and find out their input prior to decisions being made. And then those decisions will have more buy-in and they're more on point versus you make a decision in isolation of employee perspective an employee voice, and then you're dealing with the aftermath of you know, resistance, anger, and perhaps a policy or decision that's off point. So that is the intention of the book. That's kind of how it came to be. And it's been an incredible opportunity this past year as the book has been released to work with other senior leaders to kind of help shift that perspective and let them know I've been in their shoes. I have had those competing priorities myself. And there have been times when I didn't connect with employees, even though I knew how valuable it was and the impact that had on me as a leader. I became, you know, I was more disengaged, less inspired to do my work. And then I would kind of realize I hadn't done the important work, which is employee connection. And I would find a way to shuffle my schedule around, reconnect, and then my perspective would change as well. I, I really love that, you know, the premise that you said, you know, your thought upon was about, you know, con con connecting with employees and really understanding what it's like to be in their shoes. And I think that's something that's so important and so inspiring because you really do understand someone best when you kind of see things from their perspective itself. And to point out to leaders that that is the job essentially is, um, it's just such a nice thought and nice way to kind of put it. So um, speaking of, you know, connection, it kind of leads to my second question, which is you've mentioned that you enable connection and engagement with employees to come up from crises. What has that process been like? And what do you think, you know, it entails? Right. So organizations, obviously, this year have faced significant crisis with COVID and the enduring impact of COVID. And when COVID, you know, first showed up, you know, it was an acute crisis and in an acute crisis, regardless of the nature of the crisis, you know, leaders and their visibility and connection with employees is absolutely essential. And that's tough for senior leaders and all leaders because they are so busy managing and navigating the crisis and that's understandable. And yet employees need to see you. They need to hear you. They need to see how you are impacted by the crisis. Are they seeing fear? Are they seeing you scramble? Are they seeing you personally impacted? And when you connect with them, you can share your own experience and how you are navigating it and share a little bit of that vulnerability with staff. And at the same time, give them the information as you know it best. Uh, and it may not be all the answers, which is perfectly fine. It is just the signal and the communication that you are on it, your team is on it, and that you want them to know that you will communicate with them, give them updates, answer their questions, and that you have their back throughout this. And um, some organizations that I worked with um, were just so busy and consumed with the day-to-day -day management of navigating the crisis that that piece um, was a gap, they had missed it. And so employees then didn't have the information as best as they could have it. And they didn't, they didn't know what was going on. And so speculation you know, came up and rumors were just uh, running a wild. And then they felt that they weren't important, that their, their safety wasn't important with respect to COVID. And trust really began to erode if it was a foundational element already in place. So for me, that visibility is, is essential and communication as transparent as you can be with the information that you have is another key element. And absent of communication, employees don't know what to believe and they get their information for perhaps from the media, depending on the size of the organization or from coworkers and it's not rooted in any reality of what's happening. So those are the two key elements. And then it is really doing checking in um, points or a check-in strategy with your key leaders and your employees to see how they're doing, how they're feeling, how they are navigating that crisis. And, you know, with the specific um, COVID uh, situation that we've been dealing with, 
it's been essential to really check on the personal side of your employees with respect to their own health, their family's health, and how they are actually managing it if they are in isolation or their routines have been disrupted as all of our routines have been disrupted. So understanding that personal connection is essential as well and taking the time to build that in, in spite of all of the other challenges a crisis, let alone COVID brings. Those were some very, very valuable insights. And I honestly feel like people, you know, who listen to this are going to find it very valuable right now, especially because they're so relevant to what's going on. And I think leadership itself right now has become so, so difficult because things are, this is something that, you know, never before anyone has experienced. And there is no like set in stone kind of way on how to tackle things right now. Like we're all learning, we're all trying to do our best. And even for leaders itself, it's so much more responsibility and so much more to look out for. So, you know, things like communication that you pointed out and just checking in and those kind of aspects are extremely, extremely significant. So um, I'd like to talk, you know, a little bit about your career itself to you. And, you know, I'd love to know what are some of the challenges that have stood as a turning point in your career? Yeah, um, significant challenges uh, that I had to navigate through was working through the toxicity of organizations that I, I happened to land in without really understanding the culture, <laughs> pre-decision pre to join the team. And when you start off in an organization and you start to get the sense that things are not as they seemed uh, in the interview process around kind of fundamental values of trust and respect, and you're kind of responsible for figuring out a path forward through that, you learn pretty quickly that you have to develop relationships and you have to get your own gauge on what is happening and you have to find a way to connect with employees and the leaders, uh, even the ones that are the, perhaps the source of the toxicity uh, to really navigate a path forward. And one of the stories I share in my book is a lesson that I learned uh, in the first organization I was really kind of tasked with the challenge of moving that organization forward through their dysfunctional culture. And I was new in the organization and the new CEO had come aboard and he was at one of our employee reward and recognition uh, committee meetings. And I had been maybe on the committee for three or four months. And the committee was really supposed to oversee everything related to culture, although it didn't really act in that capacity. We were really more like a, a, an advanced social committee per se. Social committee is great, and yet not really kind of hitting the mark with respect to you know, moving the culture forward. And in this first meeting, as we were setting our goals and objectives, we were kind of doing the basic kind of task, hold a recognition event, uh, you know, maybe have some, I don't know, awards uh, in place in terms of a, a, you know, a ceremony or some type of program. You know, those are all fine and good. And he stopped the meeting and he said, well, why can't we become a top 100 employer? Well, the whole room, like their heads went down and no one looked up, including me. Because I knew like, oh my goodness, this seemed so impossible. It was just not even in our window of possibility, given where we were at at the time. And given I was the one responsible for culture and a number of other items, uh, I knew that it would be me responsible for achieving what seemed like an impossible goal. So after what felt like five minutes, it was probably about 30 seconds, I raised my head, took a big deep breath, and I said, yes, why not? And I... When I did that, the room looked up and their minds began to shift as mine did as well. And sure enough, we put in the goal set for that committee that year to become a top 100 employer. And it was that specific question and me saying yes and the committee saying yes, that shifted the whole organization. Three years later, we did achieve a top 100 employer designation. And that designation wasn't built off of like a fancy, um, fluffed up application, it was built off of employee voice. There was an option to include employee engagement survey in your package. And we chose to do that based off of our employees who had then joined our committee. And through that, we really became um, on point to become a people-centered organization through employee voice. And so it was our employee engagement scores that really moved the needle to become a top 100 employer. 
And what that, that question did for us and what that yes did for us is that we then use that goal to drive everything from the board development, board focus, our physicians, this was a hospital I was at, and employees, and we were unionized as well, all through the different classifications, every decision we made was really looked through the lens of that specific goal. Is this gonna help us achieve becoming a top 100 employer through employee voice? And if he had never asked that question, there is no way in the world that we would have ever even considered it, let alone achieve it. So that really taught me, regardless of the situation, it's the important big questions that a senior leader needs to ask. So the courage to do so, because we all thought he was kind of crazy because he was the new guy on the scene. And for us to say yes. And through that, anything is possible. That was actually such an inspiring story. And I think, you know, um, it's so true that if you just kind of have a perspective, a goal, and, you know, you put it out there, it, it really can make miracles happen and things that you really didn't think were possible. So, um, of course, you know, you've achieved a lot of great things in your career and you've come a long way and there are no clear steps to success. But what I've often seen is that people who are successful often, you know, have a certain list of things that they check off the list every day. You know, it could be basic habits um, that they put together, um, something that provides them stability and discipline. Um, do you have such a routine that you'd like to maybe share? <laughs> sure. Um, I many, many attempts to build routines throughout my career. And, you know, some things did actually stick even through crisis. And what has served me well as a leader is to build in at least one moment in time, if not multiple moments of time, to really stop and reflect on what you're grateful for. And so it's that gratitude check in. And it feels like a task, like I don't have time for it. And yet when I pause for at least a minute and I begin to really think of all that went well that day, then my whole mindset, regardless of where it was at at that point in time shifts. And I'm surprised each and every time that I do it because sometimes I just don't wanna do it or I'm too busy to do it. And, and yet each time I do it, I come away grateful inspired and focused on all the positive that has happened. And I used to build that into my team meetings as well. You know, either framed through the question of actual gratitude or what are your wins for today? What are the positives that have occurred? Because as we can open a meeting and potentially close a meeting with that positive lens, regardless of how challenging the topics are that you are having to navigate through or discuss, you come away finding at least one thing to be grateful for through that discussion, that meeting, and usually it's many. And when you start to ask your, your teams that question, it is so fascinating to hear what they see as positive that you hadn't even considered yourself. So I have had many other routines that I've tried to build in and gratitude is the one that has stuck the most consistently. That is, yeah, that is very true. Gratitude can truly change a lot. And I think often, you know, we forget to reflect upon the things that we're blessed with and, you know, to count our blessings really. And that that's a very valuable thing to, you know, think about, especially in time when things are tough to, you know, just kind of reflect a little and think of all the things that you could be grateful for. Um, so lastly, on a closing note, um, it's very common to develop skills in order to excel in your career. But sometimes while building a career, one realizes that they've learned many skills as well. Has that happened to you? Yes, absolutely. Um, I certainly had the opportunities to do some formal development in my career. And, you know, I, I for fun, I had decided to try to achieve getting my doctorate and had to put that on hold after three years to become CEO. And it was never the actual formal learning that had impact on me. It was the real life experience learning through my mistakes, through missteps, and through being able to have that self-reflection on a consistent basis as to how I can do better. And so as leaders, the more that we can be self-aware and not judge ourselves for the days where things didn't go as well as we would have liked, I think that is one of the most essential skills that will serve you far better than any formal uh, skill development or leadership development program. So it's about self-awareness, self-reflection, 
and not judging yourself along the way and just seeing how you can continue to improve with your interactions and with your leadership style and skills through that reflection and your own feedback of yourself. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for speaking with us today. It was really amazing to you know listen to all the things you had to say and it was a great conversation. Um, I wish you and your business all the very best. I appreciate the time, Zia. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Um...